G'day friends, welcome to today's video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Today's video is a Tag Tuesday. I know I'm uploading it on a Friday, but I'm not changing it to Tag Friday. It just doesn't make sense that way. You know, I'm all about alliteration, so it has to be Tag Tuesday. and It's irrelevant what day I upload it, to be honest. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's a Tag Tuesday, the series that never really was a series. If you were around in 2017 when I first started my YouTube channel, wow, what a trip that is uh, to go on in my head just right then. I, I literally flash back to when I first started and if I could tell you the stories. <laughs> um, if you were around back then, I used to create on tags and I would try to, I would call it Tag Tuesday, but I think I only uploaded the first one on Tuesday and the other ones were maybe on Tuesdays or maybe just whenever, but... Um, and I think I only called it Tag Tuesday because I was wearing a tie-dye t-shirt and I really I wanted to go all the way there with the um, It wasn't even a tie-dye shirt was it? No, I don't think it was I think it was just my crazy colorful print anyway all irrelevant details It is just called Tag Tuesday because that's um, that's what I wanted to call it But I would create on tags and it was mostly just illustrations or whatever. I felt like doing collages I've done little um so called I've done paper mosaic on tags before and the tags themselves would end up in my journals as like little mixed media uh, bits and pieces to put into my journal um, some of them I worked really really hard on and then other ones I just I didn't at all <laughs> they just were what they were um, it used to back in the day I used to give away all the tags that I would make um, so a lot of them I don't even have anymore but I would put them in my Etsy orders and then once um, you know once my Etsy orders uh, became a little more frequent and there was a little more to uh, give away I felt bad that some people would get them and some people wouldn't so I just stopped altogether and then eventually I just stopped doing Tag Tuesday altogether because I just kind of left that you know where it was and now it's like a little bit of a nostalgic little retro throwback for me <laughs> I know it's not been that long but that's just what it feels like um today though I am doing something special and I'm creating on chipboard tags and I'm using my handmade modern acrylics from Target and I'm going really mixed media with this I got gel pens I got um, I think I've got pencils on there I've got ink like water reactive ink markers my acrylic paints um, literally anything I can throw at these things I'll throw at it and the chipboard is pretty receptive to it these are recollections chipboard tags from Michaels um, and, and all of this just to say I know some people ask me what do I do with the tags uh, if, if they fit in my journal I'll put them in my journal if they don't uh, well I don't know actually if they don't I just get rid of them <laughs> Uh, I have have gotten rid of a few uh, but no there is uh, sometimes I would give them away to other people or like if I gave a gift I guess I would tie one on there and be like you know happy birthday here you go here's a tag on your gift <laughs> what do you do with tags I don't know they were just a fun little space to create on I found that a lot of the time like if I was swatching something or if I was creating something um, I, I didn't want to have to do a massive finished piece for you know just for something and it, it just was a really small space that I could create on and it was an interesting shape and to be honest a, a lot of all the demos that I was watching when I first started mixed media and art journaling were by the Ranger designers and um, and everyone like Diane Tim Dina like everyone was working on tags so I thought it was honestly just something that we did as mixed media artists and I just adopted that right quick <laughs> Um, and it still stuck around. Tim still got millions of tags. So um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really with it. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm on trend with the tags. <laughs> Look, it just was what it was. And I've found, because I honestly didn't know this, but I found that not all tags are made equal. And the first batch that I got from some uh, random seller on eBay were like miracle tags. Watercolor worked beautifully with them. Pencils, they were smooth like smooth manila cardstock, but they were durable, like they were kind of thicker than you would expect. And they had a beautiful little um, cord threaded through them with a, a reinforced punch hole. Like they were great tags. I only had a limited amount of those and I thought, oh, it's fine. A tag's a tag. When I, when I run out, I'll just get another batch. Um, and when I got another batch, the watercolor didn't work on them the same way. They would peel up when I would use my paint markers. Um, it, they were just terrible. They were flimsy and like thinner. They weren't terrible. I mean, you could make it work, but I was really irritated because I didn't realize that I would never find those miracle tags again. Um, and as it were, they were just, they were resold from someone who had them. So they didn't even come in like branded, uh, branded packaging. I didn't know what brand they were to even find them again. But um, yeah, I'll forever miss those tags. I think honestly that maybe the change in the tags also had a lot to do with why I left that series in the past. And when I say series, I mean that loosely. You know, from the beginning, this actually, this Tag Tuesday marked the very beginning of my Get Out of Jail free cards, which I love on this channel. 
Um, I find that you rarely need them, but it's always good to have them. I, uh, if you if you guys are new around here, I love to uh, give myself get out of jail free cards. I think it's very important to be honest. Um, if you're in content creation, you'll find that very quickly um, a, a big way to disappoint a lot of people is to say something's coming and then it's not coming. So <laughs> if you're ever getting into YouTube videos, my biggest piece of advice is remain accountable and don't promise what's not going to be there. So um, yeah, it. I mean, there'll be mistakes made, I'm sure. But uh, I, from the beginning, would say, you know, this isn't a series. If it's a, if it comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> Just so no one would expect it. And hopefully in managing everyone's expectations, no one ever got upset when it didn't come back. Um, I guess people still do, but it's fine. I, I like to be a bit honest about those things. It keeps me more safe than anything else. So maybe it's a really selfish thing to do. But I, um, like I said, on, on my YouTube channel, I love to keep it... Uh, what I'm currently loving, what I'm really enjoying, just so that it's always fun and it's always coming from a place of, of pure passion. You know what I mean? I don't want to sit on here and um, feel obligated to do something that I said I was going to do two years ago. And I'm, you know, two years on, I'm, I'm just plugging away and I, I can't stand it. And I'm trying to make it sound like I can stand it. But you know, I'm a terrible liar as well. So <laughs> it's, it, it would just be terrible if you had to watch me do everything out of obligation. I don't think anyone enjoys that, and I think it always shows through. Uh, maybe not at first, but definitely eventually. I've, uh, I, I've, I myself, I come at YouTube from two different angles. I come at like the creator side of it, where I'm doing all the work for it, and then I come at the viewer side of it, where I'm consuming a lot of the content. And I really, really dislike um, when I feel like I've. I've burdened someone by being their viewer. So I always try to put that in the back of my head as well. And I think that's why from the beginning I was like, if I just show you what I'm loving, show you the journey as it happens, you know, <clears throat> pardon me, maybe I'm becoming a planner girl. Maybe I suddenly found washi tapes. Maybe I've just found watercolors. Maybe I just found handmade watercolors. I'll take you on each of those journeys and show you real time just what I'm loving and how I'm loving it and how it's changing um, how I create or what I create. And I think doing that the whole time has always kept me really, really excited. And I hope that that's shown through for you. Um, and that, I guess I'm just explaining that because that's what uh, the get out of jail free card uh, is for. If I find that I, I do want to do something, but maybe I don't think there's longevity in it, I'll just say like, maybe it's not going to become a series. And it is still kind of difficult. There are some times where I think, oh, you know, enough people have said like, can you please do that again? Maybe I should. But at the same time, I, I really have to be careful about setting a precedent. <laughs> Um, because I also know myself too, if, if I, if I asked a creator to do something and then they did it, I would expect that it would keep coming back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, YouTube's a really interesting thing, but let's not try to co-opt that whole conversation about YouTube. Um, this is, uh, basically just a whole mixed media set of three tags. I've used my concept stamp set. I used the body and I used the leaf and I also used the cherry blossom, the Sakura petals. And I've just gone in with a base of like really loose acrylics. You can see there, now that they're side by side, you can see this kind of new tech, well it's not new, but um, this technique that I'm working with that I feel like I've been really into lately. Maybe that's why it feels new. Um, but I've done this for a long time, so I don't know, it's not new. Just maybe I've just noticed that I'm doing it a lot. <laughs> um, and I think it really comes in handy, especially for the concept stamp sets. I don't know why, but I think it has something to do with the fact that I can stamp the image back on top if everything kind of gets lost, um, which I don't necessarily do, but sometimes I will do it. Basically, I'll stamp the image out and I'll rough in all the colors. And I mean rough. I mean, you can see how those colors look there. They're just blocked in. They don't even fill out the shapes properly. Um, they're kind of messy, kind of patchy. But then over the top of that, I will start to add in layers of mixed media. So pencils and pens and markers and all the other stuff that I love to play with. I'll start adding all of that in to add certain details and depth and shading. And then at the end, you'll have um, you'll have almost like this color layer underneath and then a layer of detail on top that really pulls that whole image together and focuses it. And I like to refine those details as I go, adding the details wherever I feel like doing it, whether it be because I want to use a certain pen or I just want more color in a certain place, or a lot of the time it has a lot to do with the eyes and the face. I'll put the most detail there just so it captures your attention. Um, but then some areas I might purposefully leave really undone. So you can see where where the image had come from and where it ended up. 
but I specifically love the effect here of that water reactive marker just blended out onto that acrylic. I think it just looks so interesting. I don't know what it looks like, but I, I'm really here for it. <laughs> um, so this is this is basically just concept stamping. I'm not gonna call it a concept stamp tutorial because I'm not teaching anything in this. Um, I am just going through the motions with my mixed media and having an absolute blast doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I, this weekend actually, I'm, as I'm recording this, voiceover i am going to australia this will be out while i'm in australia um but this weekend i will be going to teach my concept stamping workshop in uh in my hometown which is really exciting <laughs> and uh and we have a really intimate group there so i imagine that we'll get it to uh a lot of no good and i can't wait because i think this this sort of uh look more in watercolor than than in mixed media uh, but it is optional, you could do whatever you want, obviously, but um, this sort of an idea and a technique is what I like to teach in that workshop, and, uh, and I think it's uh, going to be really, really fun. The reason I, I like it, I guess if I was going to uh, point this out, is that it is, it really takes the pressure off of approaching something with, you know, like clarity. You can just put the color down. It can just be a mess. And what I love about stamping it out is that if you made too much of a mess and you can't see a way forward, you just grab the stamp and you stamp it again. Um, you know, I'm doing this on chipboard tags, but you could also do this in your journal, like I, I do it most of the time. Um, and if it didn't work out, then paint over the page, stamp it again, or flip to the next page and stamp it again. And uh, just laying all of the base elements out first. You could do it in watercolor, you could do it in acrylic, you could do it in gouache, you could even do it in pencil. I find that you know, obviously the, the mediums you use, it's gonna have an impact. The base layer will have an impact on what you can put on top of it. So I would recommend that you use something that is pretty um, pretty friendly with all your other mediums. So that's why, you know, watercolor, um, matte acrylic paints or uh, gouache, I would recommend that. But the world is your oyster. You could do whatever you want, honestly. <laughs> um, I just had a lot of fun with this. And even though they're all stamped out using the same pieces, hopefully you can see how they came together in completely different ways. Just, you know, and I don't, I didn't do that on purpose. I, I've had people ask before, why do you do the same thing over and over and over again? Um, like if I drew a set of six of the same image, I have this weird fascination with seeing how each of them uh, progress because I can use the same base and end up with something completely different every time depending on whether my mood changed my uh, my preference to use a certain medium changed. like maybe I was just suddenly sick of using pen I wanted to use watercolor um, that would obviously affect the look um, and, and what I'm most fascinated by is to see which version I like the most because um, sometimes when you sit down to draw something or you sit down to create something and it doesn't go right the first time you can get quite discouraged but I've often found that Maybe it's not the first version that I liked. Maybe I did more. Well, maybe I even did like the first version, but there was a third version that I loved more than everything. So I like to go through a few times to see the differences and say, you know, if I've got five images next to each other, I can say, oh, number four is the one that I like the best. Thank goodness I kept going till number four because I could have just sat down and done, and done one and then thought, yeah, that's fine. Okay, next. Um, it's, it's not something I do all the time, but when I do it, it is purely out of fascination to see how different they will end up. And as it is, I actually like the middle one. Well, I don't know. I actually really like all of these for different reasons. <laughs> um, but the first is my least favorite, if you can believe that. So, and it's, it's not that I don't like it. I just like the other two more than the first. So yeah, it's, it's a super interesting process just to go through. And there are things that, you know, as you become more comfortable during your process, uh, you find that you're more comfortable to try certain techniques or you might be more experimental, you know, the third time around. And there are things that you'll find in that process, like uh, a blend of mediums or a color palette that just popped up out of nowhere or a certain motif that you didn't realize you liked. It will pop up in those more experimental stages. And that's when you get to start to learn more about um, you know, what's really going on in the back of your head because, you know, as with anything, when you're getting warmed up, you're not totally warm the first, you know, the first time you do a stretch. So I don't know. I would say do this for fun, but also expect to learn a little something about yourself the, the longer you go through the process. <laughs> Hopefully that meant something to you. If not, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Nonetheless, I am debating whether I should put these up in the store or not in our Etsy because uh, I personally don't have much of a use for them. Um, all of my frames are currently occupied. So um, these might end up in the store one day. They'll be the first tags I think I've sold, I believe. I'm not quite sure. 
Um, but anyway, I might put those up in the store just because they're on cardboard, uh, chipboard. I think they're a bit more durable. Although, I w won't expect that some of these pigments would last. Like that hot pink, if you're going to put that in the sunlight, I'll just say it now, it will most likely fade because it's a water reactive hot pink, you know, <laughs> marker. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they won't end up in the store then. If they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. <laughs> okay, bye.